Hello and welcome back to Pokemon Reborn. Please forgive the shortness of this video, but of course it exists for one reason and one reason alone. To deal with Florinia and show her just who she's messing with. So, I've done basically no training to my team. I just got everyone to level 21 so that I could, with my own weird neuroses, use any Pokemon of my choosing any time. Of course, Ratty Boy got to level 22 during the last attempt, but luckily I have no particular need for Ratty Boy. All he just does is damage, so Ratty Boy, if I ever get down to just him as my last Pokemon, I'm sure he'll be absolutely fine. So I decided I would open up with Rita spread a wee bit of mist around this place to sort of weaken her Pokemon a little bit because of course pretty much all of their moves are strengthened by the desert and that was just not on. So now that Rita has done her part, it's time for Robert to get in there with the Poison Spikes because Poison Spikes are going to be ex especially helpful in this particular um, attempt because A, her Pokemon are all sort of defensive in general, so the poison will add up quite a bit. And B, her very last Pokemon is of course a Cradilly, which is an incredibly defensive Pokemon that can heal itself and everything. And uh, the good news is that Toxic Spikes will just absolutely demolish that Cradilly, because the thing about Toxic, if you remember, over just regular poison, is that it deals more and more damage with every hit, so eventually no amount of defense or healing power in the world will be able to save Cradilly from the creeping sensations of poison. And as you can see, that mist actually didn't last all match long. I forgot it only lasted for five turns. So actually, poor old Rita basically did nothing. Though, one could argue that that mist allowed Robert to stay alive long enough to get a few acid shots off. So in that sense, Rita was a valuable member of the team. Just that Robert was slightly more valuable. But it's all a team effort. Every one of my Pokemon are beautiful little children. You can see that at level 21, Wesley earned, learned Air Cutter, which is much stronger than Gust, so I'm happy to see that being a thing. The stronger Wesley becomes, the happier I become. Now, as you can see, Grapple was badly poisoned. It begins, and Wesley is in a prime position to just cut his little bushes off. There we go, Air Cutter deals roughly 50% health, so if, even if he has a Super Potion lying around, which he does, it's not going to be much help to her, especially with that toxic dealing increasing pressure. Let's have a look and see how it does. There you go. And Breloom, the uh, grass slash fighting type. Perhaps not the best thing to swap into Wesley. And at this point, Wesley is looking like the absolute MVP. Wesley is looking like she might, he might just sweep the team. I mean, at this point, we can't really feel the effects of Robert's poison that well. It's just Wesley and his air cutters just slicing things up. So there you go. He easily displaces Ratty Boy as the highest level of my team. And she's bringing out the big gun straight away. Cray Dilly. It may look silly, but golly willy, it is indeed tough. You'll see a lot of Cray Dillys. Well, not a lot of Cray Dillys, but you can see Cray Dillys in the online battling scene because indeed their defensive capabilities are legendary and they can absolutely stall out a team and just wear you down but of course thanks to good old toxic you can stockpile your defenses all you like it's just not going to be enough there we go he's laying down the smackdown and i think this toxic is going to be enough to finish the job yeah so Wesley, he's nearly out of commission, but can anyone say he didn't have a massive impact in this match? He has just done brilliantly. I mean, what a waste of a Leech Seed, Pharaoh Seed. I mean, I know uh, the Pharaoh line doesn't have many offensive capabilities, but... I mean, I guess, given that it was a one-hit kill, well, not a one-hit kill, uh, the Leech Seed that finished him off, it was kind of functionally identical to using, like, Mega Drain or something. But as you can see, now Mancrick is ready to shine. See see how powerful my team is when I actually play my Pokemon to their strengths, rather than just, well, you're a lower level, so you're out next. I mean, really, I should just fight the Neuroses in my mind than just... Conclusion forthcoming. I just play my Pokemon intelligently, because otherwise I would have had Florinia down in one. She was nowhere near the threat. That Julia was to me. I mean, with Julia, even once I'd worked out my strategy, it was a real nail-biter. 
you and finding that sand attack was just about the worst thing you could have done. Because now you have given Mancrick all the ammunition he needs to finish you off. Here we go. Very well. Floronia, you're awesome and I think you're great, but you're just not quite as good a grass trainer as me, I have to say. Challenger remains due to receive Canopy Badge. The Canopy Badge encourages proper behavior among Pokémon up to level 35. Additionally, as per custom, accept this TM. Nature Power? That was indeed the power! Nature Power varies based on the terrain and field effects in which it is used. To use it effectively, one must exercise proper knowledge and understanding. A staple of an effective trainer. That was the use it wisely. That was the move that Fern had. Now, from here, where do you intend to go? If you do not have other intentions, I have one final request for you. Because of my status as leader and faculty at this school, I cannot stray far from it. However, there is still a crisis in this city. As you no doubt know, the Jasper and Barrow wards have been ransacked by the same spell as Obsidia. However, whereas we caught Obsidia in a budding state, we were not so fortunate with those wards. Being that you alone know the truth of what transpired in the Obsidia Park, I would ask that you venture to the Jasper Ward. Discover if there is not a similar plot behind the destruction there. Moreover, this will be useful for your own quest as well. One of the Reborn League, Jim's Lies Beyond Jasper. I will make preparations for your passage to Jasper. I might wish you good luck, however, luck is merely an illusory essentialization of statistics and is not inherently good or bad in any way. Regardless, farewell. Farewell to you, Florinia. I hope to see much of you in the rest of the game because you're just the tops, not like your stinky brother. Anyway, we're about done with this gym, and I thought I thought it would make far too small a video for me to just show you the gym battle and nothing else. There I was just having a little brag, showing off that only three of my Pokémon actually fainted during that battle. No way near the threat that Julia was, and that's a shame. I'd hoped Florinia could represent grass trainers as the badasses they truly are, but I'll just have to save that job for me. What am I looking for? What's my oh yes, nature power, of course. I think I need to teach it to Rita so that she actually has some offensive capabilities, because right now she just doesn't. I'm gonna get rid of Mist, I think it played a reasonably useful part in that battle, but I can't see it being much use ever again, really. Of course now I'm gonna eat my words and it just ah. The best has gotta be Amy! She's so nice and yet really strong and cute! And I'm so jealous! Is that Amy is an amethyst, Amy? Wicked indeed, but obviously Florinia is best. I mean, she still runs the gym here. Come on! No way, Titania is wicked cool. She doesn't take shit from anyone. Obviously, Julia is the best. She's so hyper and fun. Ka! They're all debating on which leader from this school is their favorite. There were four, all roommates, who graduated from here to be gym leaders. You know, guys, there's another trainer who transferred from here to a Apophophil Academy. I like her better than any of them. <coughs> I like how most of the characters in this game seem to be women. I appreciate that. As someone who's played far too many games, I mean, anyone who plays games has played far too many games, where, like, all the characters of note are just grizzled dudes. I'm sick of it. I'm glad to see that this particular Pokemon world, while it is dark and gritty to the point of being inaccessible to younger players, which I very much regret because I think younger players would love a game of this particular sophistication. Um, that sentence was such a wreck that I can't actually figure out how to finish it, so I'll just reiterate my point and say that I'm appreciating seeing a lot of female characters here. Um, I don't mean female in the skeezy, oh hello there my lady, female way, I just mean that that's what they are. They're women, I should have said. 
I should have said, I'll put my fedora down and refer to them as women as they should be referred to. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you later.